Uh, I have to say my favorite one is like three. Okay, like, and I actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to four. Okay. One is my one of my favorite ones is when Tim Armstrong did it because that's just unbelievable for us. Yeah. And he was so gung ho and like. He had the same spirit with, that we had about it. He's like, he's, he's like, Dave, let's do this. So I'm gonna do this because he's a film guy. So you know, with the shot, it's like a one shot. Uh -huh. So I got it was really nice to talk like, film me one shot stuff. And, and he's just he was just all about it. He was, he was awesome. So and it was really interesting because that was a walkthrough, like a okay. good fellas walkthrough, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that, like, that one. Doing choreography it has to be like. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> Basically, it takes about a half an hour to 40 minutes to plan one minute, oh, you know? Geez. And then I love the Suicide Machines one that was live on stage at a Warped Tour, because that was just interesting. And then there was this one in China that was just so, like, we're doing a little bitch video in China? It was just <laughs> odd, you know? And then there was just this one all-star uh, uh, warp Tour one where it was, like, Kevin Lyman and all the people that you just love so much. And, Lisa Brownlee, who just is pretty, so when I see those people go through, it's pretty, but it's hard because yeah. the Motion City soundtrack, I was saying you, you would always drink uh, out of like a bowl, like a like cereal, oh, yeah. and a fly walked across the lens. It, it looks like he looked at the fly, I guess it's male, looked at it, it looked like it looked like it at everybody in the video and then flew away. So I don't know, everyone's, everyone's special. And, I highly oh. doubt it. <laughs> I would love to see that conversation, though. I, I mean, I, first of all, I don't know who we would ask, and then I just we're happy. Well, here's the thing: we cover your song. Um, we, first of all, we have no idea if you like the cover. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, um, you just do this thing where you choke beers. Now, how does that feel? I, I, I think it would be amazing. Um, we, we have chatted with Linval before, the guitar player. He has a good sense of humor, so if anybody was gonna do it, he would be the guy. But you're so right, like. If that ever happened, talk about a perfection. Like, that would be so It's, so. it's the day to do it. Our dressing room is, is right next door to theirs. We have, a, we have like, you know, a hotel door that could marry the two rooms. Let's see, let's see how yeah. audacious. <laughs> I don't know, I just like, quirkiness. <laughs> well, um, yeah, the fact that I got to do the, I didn't know that uh, they had Mel Banana characters on stage with the Aquaman's, did that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Dickies just, you know, at, uh, their tour manager Dale asked me to sing two songs and when I was a little kid I loved that show so I was like, it's like singing Sesame Street in front of a crowd that wants to hear Sesame Street so it was just really nice. I don't know if the connection is. Yeah. Well, well also, um, on Yo Gabba Gabba, they do the banana song, the Aggrelites do it. Uh, it's, okay. it's an old Simmerip song, it's an old Jamaican song. I, did, I, I mean, I, I think in the Jamaican uh, idiom, like they like a lot of double entendre, and I think the fact that a banana is phallic yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is why they, yeah, they ended up doing a lot of the Jamaican songs. And I think, like, you know, everybody wants to name check the Jamaican stuff, so I think it may have just assimilated. In terms of Dave performing the banana split song, there's no Jamaican lineage there. No, yeah. that, was just, that was just like a, basically, hey, you're going to be doing this. Yeah, and nine-year-old Dave just being happy. Yeah. 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 It really came because Big D like was never really going to be like a band that we were like, let's go. Make it, you know. We weren't like, you know, like Guns and Roses. Let's get on a bus and go to L.A. and become famous. You know what I mean? We were just people who were just musicians who like to write music, you know. And then we figured out, you know, because I, I, I think New Englanders are very resourceful people. We we're like, hey, if you can put out a, a record, we can put out a record. Yeah. So then, so many days when you tour is like eight to nine to twelve hour drives. And I just would read and read and read because you know when Big D started, you know, everyone wasn't in their phones. There were books, and so so I just read and I read and I read and I had that moment where I was like, if I can put out a CD, I can put out a book. And so I just kind of I read all about like you know make sure you do it well. You know how do you do it? And and I love Charles Bukowski obviously, and I could go on with names, but I don't want to be one of those people. But like you know. Uh, and so I just started putting out poetry because it's lyrical content that I couldn't actually put through Big D's. You know, like, you have to... You know, How do you decide that? Like, what's going to be a song? What's going to be a... What direction the album's going, you know? Like, you don't want to talk about something the other guys are like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So then I started putting out books and... Uh, and then uh, the reason why the, the audio the audio poetry book existed is just very New England. Uh, me and my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife, uh, we got stuck in a house for like a week because of a, a blizzard. So I was like, 
and we had like barely any power, so we would, I would charge the computer up while we had power, and then do the make the poetry book, and then have to breathe out to my car to mix it, and I would have to go like, go out and I would mix it, and so that's how that that's how that came to, came to be. My new book is coming out uh, November 25th, and I'm very very excited. About it. Be. It's called Kringle, and it's about a man who just wants to make people feel special just for one day. No, yeah. Well, I believe in like the music industry these days. I believe there are people who want to be in bands, and then there are musicians. People who want to be in bands, um, they want to like have tour buses and, and be famous and live the lifestyle. Um, and they often kind of like will ditch out on a band if it's not doing very well. And, you know, they're kind of like, um, I guess a gold digger, but for fame. And so they'll change styles and they'll do things and all this. They do, you know, we're just kind of loyalists and we're musicians. So the difference between people who want to be in a band and musicians is musicians almost have like a disease. Like, you'll play until you're in poverty. You know, we're not allowed to walk away. You know, a lot of people, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out how to give a shit, and you have to give a shit to give a shit, and people aren't putting that little extra in, and so, Big D, of course we want to hear the most amount of people listen to our music. We would love to be as big as Lady Gaga, because we love our songs, but no, we're not going, we're not like business first, music second. We're hopeless musicians that love music, and um, you know, that's kind of the curse that we have, and we love we love our curse. Yeah. Um, you know, Big D these days, uh, we've had backup singers for like seven years, and we finally have gotten to the point where we, we promised them that we would back their record up, so we finally, we, like, we're their band, and uh, they're called the Dope Drop Dollies, and the New Way Out just came out, and uh, we've been playing with them for a while, and it's pretty awesome stuff. It's kind of like stroll the style of, we're trying to invent a style of music. You know, hopscotch, double dutch, northern soul, reggae. We're going to be working on a new record soon for Big D. Uh, we're going to get that going at the beginning of the new year. Uh, we're, we're doing a tour with Less Than Jake in Europe. Uh, if you're over there, go ahead and buy tickets. In the U.S., we're doing Pittsburgh tomorrow. Nice. New York on a boat on Sunday. Oh, yeah. And then we're also doing Fest in Gainesville, Florida. Yeah. And our Halloween show at the Paradise in Boston, October 22nd, with uh, Wilhelm Scream. Yeah. One of the one of the one of our oldest, oldest, oldest friends. It's gonna be pretty wild. And uh, Alex and I uh, potentially might have a uh, kid song coming out, but we can't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We're like for a cart an animated series. We got one of those funny ones, so we can't talk about it. I but... forgot about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, I thought you were talking about something completely different. <laughs> like, um, I think he's been doing some fun, like you know, Yo Gabba Gabba Kid Show stuff. Uh, Watch yeah. out. Yeah, we um we don't have a lot of. Uh, sort of fruits or vegetables in our songs yet. There's no bananas, there's no <laughs> avocados or anything, but that could be a theme. You know, we haven't quite written the lyrics for the next album. Yeah. So watch out, crazy shit.